wanted to go back to um, the lack of sunshine. Yes. It, so what about sunscreen then, which is blocking the... That's the, that's, well, you see, that's the problem. I mean, if you can get 20 minutes of no sunscreen first and then do the sunscreen after, okay. that's why you wouldn't go in the middle of the day during the summer months. You would go first thing in the morning or at the end of the day. Okay. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Um, what about um, kids with the light? You know, they all seem to need a I light. Know. Well, you see, that's the thing. And that's how a lot of adults end up with sleeping issues when they get older because of that. Well, that's I true. That's a very tough one. That's a really what did she say? One. Well, kids are very scared of the dark. I mean, yeah. I know even as a kid when I was growing up, I was really scared of the dark. So you always have to have a light on. Um, so the thing is, you know what? You can't have that. Because, you know, you don't want them to have fear. I beg to disagree. <laughs> if you teach them to sleep in the dark, they will sleep in the dark. So you think it's, it's the parents who are afraid that the kids may need the light. No, but some kids are really scared. I agree. They have, they have an inborn, uh, it's true, I mean, some of it is, you know, what the parents do, too. But if a kid has had any kind of trauma, okay, the trauma will interfere, you know, will affect their sleeping at night. So that becomes a, a you have to deal with that, yeah, there's no issue, exactly. Um, but maybe if you can teach them the fact that they're going to sleep much better without the light. I don't understand that. That maybe would that be better for their immune system. But, you know, if you sort of teach them, they'll understand, we'll understand that. Okay, and then the last point was if you have any underlying undiagnosed medical conditions. And the thing that came to mind to me was about the thyroid. <coughs> because that's a very common underlying medical issue that's not diagnosed. And then those of you who have your physicals done and you, you know, always make sure you get a thyroid test done, a thyroid level done. Okay, an optimal <coughs> TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone, should be between one and two. So if you're above a two, you have already the beginning of a thyroid problem. Okay, so just keep on top of that because that's very important to your overall immunity. Thyroid is critical for immunity. What is that called? Uh, TSH. Ideally, you want to do a thyroid panel, Dolly, but TSH is one aspect to that. Mm -hmm. But what happens a lot of times is that you'll have your physical done and the doctor, you know, your doctor will tell you everything's fine. Then you look at your TSH and you're at 3.5. That's not good. You want to be between 1 and 2 for optimal immunity. Between 1 and 2. And a lot of endocrinologists now are starting to put people on medication if they're, you know, above a 2, 2.5. Yeah. What do you think about this whole thing about armor um, thyroid? You know that. Yeah, the natural it, thyroid. It's a prescription natural thyroid. It, it does work for some people. For others, it doesn't. But they now there's something happening in the drug industry that the pharmacists can no longer get it. They're not. Because it, it, the issue with it is the fact that it's very hard to get it exactly um, at the right dosage. I mean, right. <laughs> because it comes from you know a natural source. It comes from the thyroid of pigs. Actually, is where they right. extract it. And the problem is you don't get consistent amounts of it. So it's not they can't standardize it. That's really the whole issue with it. Do you have any issues with uh, synthroid with this synthetic? Um, it's one of the least harmful of all medications. Okay. Yeah. When you compare it to blood pressure or cholesterol. What is it? We can't hear it. Synthroid. 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 Synthroid, how's that? Is that safe or not safe to take? It's one of the least harmful you know, medications. But remember, all meds, anything you take in is always metabolized to the liver. So that's why you do as much as you can to keep your liver in good shape. And that's why we talk about all this stuff. Is the TSH uh, normal and, and just a regular physical? Is that part of it? Some the physicals will include it, some will not. So just make sure when you so get you a physical, to, yes. you need to or ask. Or always ask. Check. Okay. Okay, that's very important. How often should it be tested? Um, I would, that's a good question. If you are having a problem, every three to four months. Okay, four if months. you find, you know, one or two, you know, from one year to the next year it's very good, then once a year is sufficient. Okay, but if, it, yeah, if you have a thyroid condition and you're on medication, definitely every three to four months. That's important. Because things change, okay? Things really do change. What, um, what levels do you, for T3 and T4, what do you recommend for that? Okay, um, that's, okay, usually anything mid-range is what I always recommend on the T3 and the T4. Okay. Exactly. So very important, did you hear the rest of uh, Eve's question? Okay, what about the other thyroid numbers like T3 uh, and there's also T4? Just make sure you're a dead smack in the middle of the range. Okay, that's good. So you don't want to be low, low, you know, in the range. You want to be mid-range. Mid 
And that brings me up to vitamin D, by the way, okay, which I want to talk about. Lab testing for vitamin D, the first defense we have against swine flu and um, other flus and just overall immunity is our vitamin D levels. Okay, so it's very important to get your vitamin D levels checked if you haven't already done so. And the same thing applies. The range, if you're doing it through Quest, is usually either anywhere from 20 to 100. Sometimes I've seen it from 30 to 100. So you don't want to be right at 20 or right at 30. Okay, you want to be a minimum at 60. The okay, full so name. The please. high end of the range. The full name. Of the name of the vitamin D test, it's vitamin D uh, 25. The number 25 hydroxy. That's the name of the vitamin D test. Okay, so it's vitamin D 25 hydroxy. Okay, because there's different vitamin D tests. So you know, make sure they don't do the one for research because you're not interested in that. You're interested in knowing where your tissue levels are. Okay, so that's what why that's the numbers again between 60 and Well, you want to be, um, let's say the range is between 20 and 100. You want to be at least around 60 or higher. Okay, so don't be low end on the vitamin D. You want to be on the upper end of the vitamin D. So that's very important. All right, great. So now we can move on to the nutritional and supplement tips. Okay, um, some of you who know me know that I work with blood types, and one of the reasons why I work with blood type, by the way, is the fact that it, it builds up gut immunity, okay? So other than saliva, when we take in uh, food or we take in something with bacteria or anything, it, it, it goes into our mouth, and sometimes the saliva can help us, you know, fight it off, and sometimes it, can, it cannot. What happens is when the food gets into your gut, that's the first line of defense you have. So one of the reasons why we work with blood types is the fact that it's the only food program that really works on building up immunity. Okay, so let's say somebody is an A blood type. Typically with A's, we have them do more of a vegetarian diet. If they're a B blood type, they can do some meat and some dairy. If they're an O type, no dairy, no wheat in the diet at all. So what about okay. AB? And then AB is a combination of A and B. So most ABs usually do better on a more of an A type diet. Oh, AB negative? AB negative, yes. Because mm -hmm. that's the most rare. Yes, mm -hmm. AB positive? AB positive, yep. Same thing, Same more thing. of an A blood type diet. So that would be more Okay, positive. yeah, exactly. Uh, no dairy and no wheat. Okay, so avoiding those two things. And then if you do have issues with immunity, then the gluten and dairy free, no matter what your blood type is, okay? avoiding gluten and dairy becomes even more important for that person. If you're a person that gets sick so often, okay, then getting dairy, dairy is definitely congesting, it does um, congest us, okay, so if you have issues with sinuses, any upper respiratory, you definitely want to get off the dairy, okay, because that makes a huge difference on your overall immunity. It interferes with your white blood cells, and you need as much white blood cells to help you fight off infection. So that's very important. And then vitamin D, um, are all of you taking vitamin D? I'm just curious. How many people here? Yeah. Oh, wow, super. Okay. I take it with the calcium. calcium. Okay, sometimes what you're getting in the calcium is not enough. enough. That's why you need to test. That's why you do the blood test. What's an average? How many? Um, most people need day. around three to 4,000 IUs a day. Yeah. Not in the winter months when we don't get any sun at all. But that's why you test. Make sure you, you, that's why you get tested. And your levels are very different in the winter than they are in the summer. That's why you have to test at least twice a year on the vitamin D. Because okay? you don't have the sun exposure. Okay. 